Welcome to the Bracky Factory and welcome to the latest thrilling episode and we're back on the V12 Speedster project. In this episode I'm going to tell you what the cunning master plan is but first I'm going to have to open that massive great box because I'm going to need what's inside. Have you guessed what it is yet? So here we have a dirty great big crate. Got to be nearly four foot high square and it weighs about 150 kilograms I think and I've put these uh, these workshop uh, workbench casters on it to actually roll it into the garage but now of course I need to get it all out so it's time to open the crate Right, so there it is. Basically, it consists of the of the stand, which is bolted to the floor, and also the wheel anvil, I suppose, which is also bolted to the floor. And this is this is the wheel. Very nice it is too. So I think rather than try and lift the um, the stand out of the box, I will take the box down around the stand. Right, so far so good. Uh, this base, which is a um, folded steel um, and probably TIG welded base, is solid but not all that heavy, whereas this is very heavy. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is, it's got loads of other bits and bobs, I'm not sure what they all are, these are probably the bottom wheels in here, various footrests etc. I think what I'll do is I'll put these in a safe place and then lift this up and set it on top of there and take stock. So here it is, lowered onto its base using a weight lifting belt strap thingy, plus a backup sling just in case. Uh, but it held fine. Um, so many people might be saying, where the hell are you going to put it? Well, actually, the depth of the thing, this from here to here is 46 centimetres, which is actually shallower than my um, milling machine and lathe. So it's basically going to go there which means i'm going to have to have a big clear out which you know is never a bad thing i've got so much stuff here and so much stuff here that uh, half of that can go uh, but of course what i need to make is a base on um bench casters so i can actually roll it uh, lift it onto the on off the ground on casters and then roll it around and then wheel it back sideways in that place there so uh, I've got some casters. I used these already um, to move the, the pallet around. They're big, heavy-duty jobs. Uh, so I've got to make a steel frame. So let's make a steel frame. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right, after quite a bit of welding, the trolley has been fabricated. Um, it wasn't difficult to, to weld, it was just awkward because the um wouldn't fit on my actual bench, so but I did persevere and anyway it's welded up. I have also spotted a potential design flaw to do with where the footwheel goes uh, around there, so I might have to make this bit removable, but uh, we'll find out. So I think the next step is to take it to the garage and stick the wheel on it. So right, let's give it a test, uh, nice and solid on the ground, uh, press those down, rolls around, give it a twirl. So now we need to stick that on there. So does it roll? Yes, it does roll. Perfect. So what I need to do now is set it all up. So here it is, English wheel is now all set up and behind it, as you can see, is the space where it's going to go. Uh, so I've had to add this, um, this rod and foot wheel, which is used to lift uh, and lower the, the uh, bottom wheel. But it's also got this, this quick release drop mechanism so you can change the, the bottom wheel without rolling it down. Um, I was right about being wrong about this, so I did have to cut this piece out, but that's absolutely fine. I mean, this top bit gives it all the rigidity, so I've got no qualms about that at all, so that's fine. So I think um, it's time we took it for a little test drive. Right, here we go. So it seems to work and by running it backwards and forwards I'm putting a bend on it this way and a common misconception is that if you run it backwards and forwards you put a bend on it that way. It's not like a roller, it's different, it stretches the material so it puts on a curve this way. So, And if I was now to turn it this way I put a curve on this way. But of course in the grand scheme of things I know absolutely nothing about this, I've got a massive steep learning curve. I'm going on a course actually in a few weeks time to learn a bit more about it but um, it's all part of a big master plan and of course the master plan is all about the big V12. So now that the English wheel is in its new home just here it's time to talk about the cunning master plan but before I do that I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who supported the channel and bought one of these t-shirts. Now these have gone all over the world, uh, lots to America, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all over Europe and some of you have been kind enough to send photographs of you with some of your cool stuff. And here are a couple of very good examples. This is Niels Nielsen from Norway and Niels is a bit of a TVR man. And if you know your cars you'll know that the TVR is an iconic British sports car.
In the background is the TVR 350 from 2004, and in the foreground is a 1967 TVR Vixen Series 1. This is fitted with a Daimler V8, and Niels is currently lowering the engine so it can fit quad IDFs. He's also working on a new exhaust manifold, which matches the colours of the t-shirt, which is quite appropriate really, because a lot of elbow grease has gone into that already. We're looking forward to seeing how all this comes together. This is Thomas Crissell from Sweden. He's standing behind his immaculate Ducati Derma from 1978, and behind him is the Motor Guzzi California from the 80s. And behind the Motor Guzzi is a lovely little PAV 41 trailer. These little trailers were made in the Czech Republic in the 1970s, and is probably one of the rarest things in the picture. So it does seem that everybody who watches this channel has impeccable taste in machinery, and that's two more very good examples. But anyway, if you want to support the channel, please do consider buying one of these t-shirts from the shop just there. Actually, there's a new one available, and it's white, completely impractical for fettling, of course, but perfect for walking around those sunny car shows, auto jumbles, going to screw fix, or generally just chilling around. Anyway, time to talk about the cunning master plan. So now that that massive box is out of the way, I can move the chassis out of the garage. And now that I can move the chassis out of the garage, I can lift out that old engine. And now I can lift out that old engine, I can, well, you can guess where I'm going with this, can't you? So let's take a look at the chassis and work out what we need to do. Right, we're now down the busy end of the workshop where things sit waiting patiently. Obviously we've got the big VIG-12, we've got the RAG, we've got the Lola. But of course, front and foremost is the Daimler chassis. Now it's been sitting here a little while, uh, waiting patiently for me to get around to it, and its time has now come. Uh, so what do we need to do? Well, first off, we've got this big, well it's big, but it's not that big, but it's big, um, two and a half litre straight six engine. It's actually almost as long as American France, because of course it's six cylinders long, so is American France. And I basically need to lift this out with the gearbox and... Uh, and get rid of it. I do actually have the whole engine plus another uh, integral cylinder block and heads. It's, it's all a single unit on these things. Uh, not quite sure why I've got two but I have got two uh, and they look, both look very good. And I've also got all of the parts or the rocker assembly, everything to make up the engine. So if you're interested in that, drop me a line. So of course the box is coming out as well. This is a pre-selector gearbox, and it's got all of this sort of linkage, which is all very cool, of course, but I won't be using any of it, because, of course, I'm using the Rolls-Royce gearbox. But this gearbox, the length from the bell housing to the end, is a fair bit longer than my Rolls-Royce box, so this is all quite promising in terms of, of putting the engine and gearbox in the chassis. It's got quite a lot of non-structural bracketry that runs along the side. I've already cut some of it off because I was smacking my shins into it. So this is all going to come off. Um, the other side, basically that, that's what held up the, the running boards on. So that all needs to come off. And all of this mechanism needs to come off as well. Now this is your brake servo. Enormous great thing and it, it runs off this pressurized canister. Now I won't be using any of this mechanism. As, as cool as it actually is, I won't be using it because I'm going to be using the servo off the Rolls-Royce box. And of course we have the big American France V12 engine. If you've been following the, the channel you know that quite a lot of work has gone into getting this running and a quite a lot more work has gone into mating this Rolls-Royce gearbox to the back. And on this Rolls-Royce gearbox we have this um, brake servo mechanism completely mechanical and the plan is to use this and i've been talking to somebody who's contacted the channel who knows all about these gearboxes and how this servo mechanism works so i think we're going to take a trip and go and see him and find out a bit more about that there are a few more things i want to do to the engine it was quite a lot of work getting to where we are now but a bit more work needed i've already got rid of the exhaust manifolds and i think the next thing to do is to get rid of the inlet manifolds and these carbs and put different carbs on it. I want to have carbs either in the valley or sticking out the side, but not down drafts. It's all a bit too high, really. And if you've seen me start this, uh, I use like a pressure bottle and squirt fuel in there. What I want to do is fit this. This is a Kai Gas 
pump as fitted to um, Spitfires in the Second World War. Uh, unscrew this, pump it, and it basically pumps fuel straight into the inlet manifolds after the carb uh, and gives you um, plenty of bang for your buck. So I'm looking forward to fitting that and seeing, um, seeing the flames pop out. And if you've not seen the engine running, you won't have to wait very long because very high on the agenda is a restart of the big old girl. So next up, we'll be taking out this engine and box and offering up the other one. Will it fit? Place your bets, folks. And then there's the body, of course, and that's exactly why I bought the English wheel. And in this case, I'm definitely gonna let form follow function. I'm gonna build the whole car, get everything working, possibly even take it for a drive before I decide to wrap the whole thing in a body. The body's gonna be inspired by the awesome Delage DHV12. I've shared a few pictures of that in the past. It'll be aluminium, of course, but we'll see how it all pans out. I've got to decide how I'm gonna make it. Do I use an aluminium frame like Metal Shaper Tom? A wooden frame? Do I make bucks? I'm not sure. What would you do? So exciting times ahead. I'm really glad to be getting back on the big V12 project. And I hope you are too. But of course, I've not forgotten about the nearer car. Next thing for that is the engine. And if I can just clear some of that bench space, I can start working on the engine. But if you want to see any of this, you're going to have to tune in next time. So if you've not already subscribed, please hit subscribe. Please do leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the show so far. But for now, thanks for watching.